Welcome back to the Warrior Port Textile Facility and Training Center where we were going to be performing our wonderful test to prove impoviously that the Warrior Port Appella is bulletproof as well as powerful on the range. No ready? chance that they're bulletproof. 100% bulletproof, he stands by it, absolutely. I do not. Let's prove it. Now we will be forming the test. Commence. Here is 100% success rate. These are tests. You can see for yourself. What do you call that? This is where the bullet exited the shirt, leaving the person inside completely harmless. Are you saying that the bullet traveled around the person and came out the same? Yes, exactly. What happens is the bullet circumnavigates using circum differentiation. Enter, turn, exit, leaving the person inside completely harmless and ready for battle. There you have it. Not bulletproof. Warrior Poet approved. No, not bulletproof. Definitely not bulletproof, sir. All right, guys, so range day, we have gotten so much crap that it's required at a range. Now I went and got this sweet car from Walmart. It's probably gonna fall apart in, uh, in like 30 seconds, but this is gonna help us out. We're at Governor's Gun Club. This is in Kennesaw. We get up here about once every month or so we get up here. Anyway, pretty good time. We're gonna run and gun, make some videos. It's gonna be grand old time. So uh, yeah, here we go. All right, what's happening, folks? I'm in Kennesaw, Georgia at Governor's Gun Club. Having a good old time with my buddy, Eddie. Say hello to the people. Hey, how are you? Hey, how are you? Very good. So uh, in this video, we're gonna teach you how to rock and roll with an AR-15. The idea is to be able to shoot accurately and quickly without trying so hard. That means we rest on our technique. But before we jump in, Eddie, you gotta choose a gun. And I've got three babies for you to choose from. Oh, so man. You gotta choose wisely. You wanna take a peek? Let's take a peek. All right, here we go. So, these are all AR pistols. This is a 5.56. This is a 300 blackout with Vortex Razor uh, LPVO. This is my Landtac, probably my favorite gun, and it's also in a pistol 5.56. Go with that one. All right. All right, guys. So Eddie's a former grunt. He knows how to run a gun. But what I want him to do is just have a real jacked up platform, so I have something to fix. So Eddie, let's go ahead and face down range and present in a terrible manner. All right, and come on back. Now you laugh at this foregrip. I immediately see it. But if you got a clear room for like eight hours, this is about the only way you're going to be able to hold it with any longevity. So if you look first and foremost, you see all this space in between his shoulder and the buttstock, and that is really, really bad. Uh, it, it could be even worse as some people will put their rifle up here and you'll see the energy of the gun recoiling over the shoulder. So as soon as it shoots, you're gonna lose your sights and you're gonna have to find them, find them, and that's no good. Similarly, sometimes folks will have a rifle too low, and that means when they try to get a sight picture, try to get a sight picture, they'll have to push their head way down and then flag their shoulder up really high like that. And all that amounts to being really slow. And sometimes you present your gun and you don't see anything. So the real goal, go ahead and relax, is to have the top of the butt stock or brace right here at the very, very top. So that when the gun recoils, it's going into kind of your bone. Sometimes guys will have big lats up here like this no just kidding i'm working on it though uh, right there even so right here i see a little triangle i'd rather not have that and so i'll even have them come in a little bit 
more into his rifle and you'll see it kick back in place. Now I also see a craning of the wrist right here. It's not too bad, but I'm looking at his general length of pull and I would prefer it, go ahead and face straight up and grab the pistol grip. If you'll look here, go ahead and come right arm, right angle with your arm. You'll see right here, it's a good quick way to test your length of pull. Pretty good right there. I think he's gonna be a little bit more comfortable. Just one out, one click out, and let's try that now. All right, very good. See, we have this big mess, which I hate as well. And as we kick it back, you'll see the energy kind of push through the shoulder. My goal, if shooting quickly and accurate is the name of the game, I'd rather him push into his gun a little bit more. And it's not accomplished by squatting forward. It's more by taking your energy and leaning it forward onto your toes. So let's lean forward on the toes, on the toes, on the toes. Yeah, very good. Starting at the feet, I would like us to be in an athletic stance. If Eddie put his feet side by side in what's called a horse stance, you could see quickly as he hits, it rocks back. So it doesn't really matter how good all this stuff is. If your feet are side by side for shooting quickly, rifle or pistol, it's gonna rock you back and rock back, rock back and rock back. So we wanna kick back one foot. Not too much, let's come in a little bit more. It should be pretty comfortable, but this, by putting all your weight on your toes, allows you to sprint forward, sprint left and right, kneel. Go ahead and kneel, drop to a knee. And you should be able to do all that, come back up, and you think transition right, transition left. And so your weight's on your toes so that you're poised ready to sprint in any direction, drop to a knee, transition, manage recoil, and have that good old fighter mindset. Suffice it to say, let's get our feet right here. I still think he's a little too far out and a little too narrow like this, so he's a little off balance, right? Uh, one way that I'll teach folks to accomplish their feet, go and relax, recover. Uh, right here is, hey, just face the target. So just go ahead and uh, punch over just to touch. Stand by me and I'll be like, all right, just face the target. Hips toward the target, chilling out. Now take your right foot and just bring it back about eight, 10 inches like that. And then literally just bring your arms up right here and lean your weight forward onto your toes. And that's gonna be a pretty darn good shooting platform. Let's come a little bit wider right here and don't lock out this knee, slight bend, leaning forward onto your toes. That's much better. Now the next thing I'll look at is the, uh, uh, the brace or butt stock, whichever one you're running. You'll won't want it on your shoulder. I, I made a video at Recover Relax. I made a video before on this where uh, a, a few different times and people were like, way to put it on your collarbone, you idiot. And like not realizing I do this full time professionally. No big deal, it doesn't mean I'm right. It just means give me the benefit of the doubt here, bro. Now, uh, you can put it directly on your shoulder, but generally what I'd prefer you do is put it in the, what's called the pocket of the shoulder. So here's your shoulder. If you put your arm straight out, you'll feel a muscle right there. Inside the muscle is what's called the pocket of the shoulder, and that's where I want you to put a rifle, right there. That allows this muscle to kind of squeeze it in, and you want to have a good push against so that you have a good platform which with the rifle can reciprocate against, right there. It's really important. In your, in your platform, you really have two bookends, the shoulder and your foregrip, which really works to sandwich uh, and squeeze the gun in hard like this. And it shouldn't be a real muscular thing. You shouldn't be trying really hard. It's more of your bones pushing and pulling against each other. So we'll have more points of contact in between here, but this is the main, is the hard push and then a nice pull. So let's go ahead and do that. And what I'll do, let me go ahead and borrow this gun. Go ahead and do what I said before, is just kick one foot back. Very good. Let's pull it out a little bit far so we're not in a slalom ski. Go ahead and put your arm straight out, straight out. And when it goes straight out right here, I'll be able to have this muscle right here. Now it's on his collarbone. That doesn't look comfortable, does it? No. No, it doesn't. So if you lean your body forward, all of a sudden it flattens out and becomes much nicer. So when you're standing upright, it hurts the collarbone. When you lean forward, this, which is butting out or jetting out all of a sudden sits nice and flat and when you pull this up kind of flexes that muscle and my collarbone gets lost under kind of the sheet of muscle that generally we're all going to have right there let's run this other foregrip out like so and it should be right in there now eddie's muscle right here is really working to squeeze this rifle in right here so when he shoots it's not going anywhere 
if it's on the shoulder and say his shoulders relax back as he shoots all the energy goes through this soul this lone shoulder and it starts wiggling around which sucks some dudes will kind of weaver out more and when they shoot it just kind of goes for a ride and they have to find it goes for a ride you have to have a stable platform with which the gun to push against so it can have an immediate recover right where you wanted it to be. So right there, brilliant, very good. Elbow down, awesome. Now this foregrip can be problematic because it depends on what you want to accomplish. If you're a competitive shooter just wanting to run a competitive shooting stage and you need 20 seconds of awesomeness, but if you run this hand way far out, we don't have much rail uh, available, but if you ran this way far out so that he basically had a lockout of this arm, it's hard for you to see if you can see it from underneath, a lockout of this arm right here. In pushing the arm way far forward like this, it allows you to have an amazing ability to control the rifle left and right and to keep the rifle from or pistol from moving upward. If you put a thumb over on top like so, it will absolutely help keep the muzzle down. And so as you move your arm out, it amounts to more control on the gun. The problem is, is the only real muscle that's hold, holding all this stuff up is really this delt right here, which gets fatigued quickly. And after about 30 seconds to a minute, all the advantages you would have with this extended foregrip are basically lost. If you come way in here like Eddie was before, you can hold a rifle, especially if you stand up more right like this and let it, wait, let it rest on your bones, you would really be able to hold this rifle for an extremely long time. And so a lot of dudes, like I remember clearing rooms in the Middle East where we're taking down a city. It, literally, I cleared nonstop for six hours, nonstop kind of thing. Uh, and so this was about the only way that you could hold a rifle <laughs> for any length of time. Generally, for my general purpose shooting though, I have a warm cup of porridge kind of thing where I go about midway out, put a thumb over on top, I take this finger right here, and I basically try to point it at my target. Because of this muzzle device, that's pretty dangerous without a hand stop. So I'm about to put a hand stop on this rifle. But if you point and that goes over the, uh, the muzzle device on this Lantac Dragon Brake, you will wish that didn't happen. That would be really horrible. Uh, but anyway, this is a pretty darn good platform. Now, the elbow right here is going to be bent. And generally, people drop the elbow down, which can be okay, uh, especially people trying not to get it shot off. But when you run your hand out more, it's not making a bigger platform that you're going to get hit with, right? But when people fatigue, when people fatigue, and they're shooting and the gun jumps up and you're trying to shoot quick and you're tired, generally the rounds will start walking down wherever your elbow's pointing. So I like guys to be able to lift their elbow up and drive it out just a little bit. So go ahead and get into this gun and present. Pretty darn good right there, that looks good. It's a little bit too much of a shake. I'm wondering if you're pulling too hard in or you've just been holding a rifle for a long time. Been right? holding for a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead and uh, let uh, rest. Very good. Move on over. All right, let me see if there's anything else to pick on him about. Go ahead and present. All right, very good. Again, he's doing that kind of slalom ski where if I pull him over, he falls and pull him over. So I'd like your legs to be a little bit wider and hips pointed at the target. That's fantastic. Lean forward, keep both eyes open. You don't need to close one on a red dot. If you see a red dot through either eye, you're good to go and you would hate to lose half of your vision in a gunfight. Go ahead and close that eye again. Very good. All right, cool. Great, and open it. Look at this, see this? Yeah. Yeah, you didn't see it before, yep. right? And it's not because a ninja is all of a sudden gonna pop out of nowhere and get this close. It was a metaphor for all the things that could be and that you completely lose all of your peripheral vision. I don't see anything over here. All right, present gun. All right, this looks pretty darn good. Now here's the bookends, is the pull and the push right here. There's other points of contact as well. I'd like him to pull back a little bit with the right hand, and then with his cheek, I want him to push down just slightly into the gun. So you really have one, two, three, and four points of contact, all kind of hugging. Go ahead and relax. 
Now, some dudes will have a problem of not being tight enough on the gun until it runs all over the place. Uh, but a lot of times also, guys will be just too tight on the gun, which means it, it'll shoot and then you're flinching all over the place and that can be bad too. It doesn't take a lot of effort or strength to be able to keep that gun still. Uh, now, some instructors in the past have been like, all right, what you want is like a 70 or 30, 70 kind of thing. I find that not very helpful. What you want to do, this is the secret, is you watch your dot or your reticle lift when you shoot and then it should recover right back. Shouldn't move a lot and it should come right back. Uh, so if you see it make a journey way right and back, well, you need to be pushing farther on the shoulder, right? If you see it zip to the left, you may be pulling this arm back when you really need to be pulling it back and left when you should be pulling it straight back and maybe ease up off this shoulder a little bit, right? So there's all that kind of stuff. What if your gun uh, shoots and lifts up and then drives down and then comes back up? You're probably gripping it all too tight and and really fighting against it after the fact. Relax a little bit, breathe, bro, chill out. Uh, the goal isn't just to keep the gun from moving at all, though that's really nice. The goal in recoil management is... The goal... The goal in recoil management is that if the gun moves, and we try to keep that from happening, it returns immediately to where you want it to and it doesn't move anymore. So that's really helpful. So Eddie's gonna shoot and we'll uh, we'll call this video good to go, man. You got anything to add? No, man, nothing. Was that helpful? Is that- Extremely helpful. That was helpful? Yes. You learned something oh even out God. of the- Yes. Yes, were you in the core? Yes. Or the, yep. see, one army ranger helping an old marine. You gonna get mad at me? Nope, I'm gonna let that go. <laughs> you're that better, go. you're a good man. <laughs> All right guys, take it easy.